Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to wire your stove isolator switch. It is assumed that you already have a stove circuit in your DB board, but I'll quickly open the DB board and just show you if you do need to run additional cables to wire your stove isolator. Right, make sure everything is off. I now open the DB board. Now in this particular installation you will see that I have the circuit breaker over here, 63 amp, and there is a 30 amp circuit breaker which is actually for my stove circuit. That means that this is is not protected by earth leakage because if you have a look on this side here you can see the earth leakage the earth leakage is on this side of that circuit breaker and just having a look at the wiring layout you can see that the incoming live goes through this circuit breaker goes round here to this top rail over here which means that the stove in this case my 30 amp circuit breaker is not protected by earth leakage now this is a common layout because of something called nuisance tripping if you do want your stove to be protected by earth leakage you'll have to move your stove to be on the circuit of the earth leakage which also means that your stove's neutral wire must be on the earth leakage protected neutral which is over here. Right, now while you are working here, just be very careful because even though it is off here, that terminal and that terminal is still on, it is live, unless you go to your street or outside area, switch off the power coming into your home or business. Right, now in this case, I've dropped the circuit breaker, so nothing on this side here is on. And now if you look here, I have my 30 amp circuit breaker. This is for my stove and I've already run the cable. This happens to be a four millimeter cable and how how you specify this is the cable size must be matched or bigger than the circuit breaker maximum current. Now in this case it's 30 amps and this cable maximum current is 32 amps. So this cable is correct for this size circuit breaker. If you have a look at this cable, this is 1.5 millimeter usually used for lights. Now this can only carry a maximum of about 16, 17 amps depending on how you run it. So this cable would be insufficient for this size circuit breaker. While this over here is a four millimeter cable, this cable can carry carry the full 30 amp current because if you use a cable which is too thin the cable will burn before the circuit breaker trips that means you have a fire hazard and the circuit breaker will not protect your entire circuit right so in this case there is my live going to my stove i have connected it to the bottom of the 30 amp circuit breaker and the neutral if you have a look at it here it is this is the neutral for my stove and if you see which neutral rail is connected to is connected to this neutral rail now on many db boards you might find there are two different neutral rails and the reason being is this one over here if you look at the earth leakage there comes the neutral to this neutral rail so that means that anything connected on this neutral rail is protected by this earth leakage now in this case i'm connecting the stove outside of the earth leakage because i'm connecting it to this side over here which means i need to connect it to the neutral rail that is over here if you have a look at the output of this circuit breaker, you can see the neutral goes there and onto this neutral rail therefore if i had to connect my stove to the wrong neutral rail you'll find that the earth leakage will keep tripping so in this case, I've connected to the right neutral rail. Now, as I said, if you want to protect your stove via earth leakage, then you will just move the neutral to that side. And then you'll also have to have your live fed after the earth leakage. Otherwise, there'll be an imbalance and the earth leakage will trip. A setup where the stove is protected by earth leakage is shown here. As you can see, this is your stove load. There is my 30 amp circuit breaker. And if you have a look, there is the incoming live and the incoming neutral and it feeds via the earth leakage. Then the output of the earth leakage is coming around here and then it feeds this common rail. That means all of these loads over here are protected by earth leakage. And therefore I can still use this neutral rail here because I have only one neutral rail and all the neutrals are protected by earth leakage because as you can see the neutral wire is coming there and there and therefore the stove wire the stove neutral is sitting over there so it is shared so in this case this DB board all the loads are are protected by earth leakage right so just having a look here there is my live my neutral and then the earth which is now going to be run to the box where i'm going to put the isolator so if you have a look here you can see there is the earth connected to the earth rail all the earths are shared now this is a lab setup so i'm just going to show you the conduit run 
and there you can see I've just taken a bend with the inspection and here is the box. Right, now here are the wires coming from the DB board. Here is my oscillator switch. I've removed the two faceplate screws. So there is the oscillator switch and there are the terminals which I'm gonna be working with. Now, as you can see, there are two on the top and two on the bottom. Now, just having a look at these, you can see that says one and that's two. And this is usually your live. So you put your live coming in from the DB board and the live going to your oven or stove will go out here. Then I've got pin five and pin six. This is usually for the neutral. So the neutral coming in from the DB board and the neutral going to feed your load. Now in your case, you might be using a conduit coming out from here and this would be feeding to your stove or oven. Right, so I've put the gland there and then you'll probably have your conduit, maybe even sprag. And I'm just gonna show you the wiring layout now. Right, now I need to expose the copper and I'm just going to use a wire stripper and I'm gonna take about 12 millimeters off. And the reason being is on this particular isolated actually says strip 12 millimeters. And the reason for that is it's recessed. As you can see, the terminal is a little bit deep inside there. So I'm going to take about 12 millimeters off. It's always best to use the right tools. And as you can see, I'm using wire strippers. Now the point of the wire stripper is, as you can see, if you have a look at the mouth, you can see it leaves a hole there. So it does not embed into the copper. So all I do now is I slice the insulator off, you can even twist it, and then you just pull. Now, if you don't have wire strippers, I'll show you how to do it with side cutters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently embed the blades into the insulation. If you look closely, you'll see that I have not embedded through the insulation. I've just embedded into the insulation, which means that if I bend that, can you see that I cannot see the copper? And the reason for that is if you use this blade and it embeds itself into the copper, you will then destroy the copper. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So I'm just embedding it a little bit. And as you can see, all I've done is I've cut a little bit into the insulation. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm pulling away. So it's actually a pulling function rather than a cutting function. And now if you look closely, I'm actually gonna expose a little bit more just to show you when I cut the insulation off, you see I did not damage the copper. And what I mean by that is if you cut too deep, what happens is you cut through the insulation and then it embeds into these strands. Say for example, this one over here. If you look at that strand, you can see that it's got an indentation in it and watch what happens when you bend it. Bend there and I don't even have to try very hard and look, it just falls off just like that. And what happens is if you leave it like that, you're now reducing the current carrying capacity of this conductor. Right, I just twist it with some pliers to keep all the strands together. Right, now it's time to wire up the isolator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now put the live in terminal one and I'm gonna insert that like so. And I'm gonna put the neutral and this happens to be terminal five. Remember that the pinouts here might be different for different isolator switches. They may not all follow that same numbering sequence and I'll show you with a multimeter how to test it when I'm done. When you insert the wire, push it right all the way into the end. Right, just inspect that the screw that is depressing the copper is actually engaging with the copper. And I can see there it's also engaging with the copper. Those are fastened correctly. Right, now I have my multimeter here set to continuity, as you can hear, telling me it's a short circuit. So if I measure the faceplate, you see it's a short circuit. Now what I'm doing is I'm just showing you that the connections are correct. I'm putting the one lead on the one live wire and the other lead on the output, which is going to the load. Now you can see it is not making any sound and that is because the isolated switch is currently off. Now when I close the switch, you can hear that it is a short circuit. And I open the switch, it disconnects the incoming live from the load side live. Right, now having a look at the neutral, so there you can see I put the one lead on the neutral terminal and the other lead on the load side neutral terminal. As you can see, it is telling me it is an open circuit. Now when I close the isolator, you can hear that it is a short circuit. And when I open it, right, so that is how the isolator functions. It functions as a double pole switch, which means that both these poles become open when you open the switch 
and both these poles become closed, the live goes to the live and the neutral goes to the neutral, closing it, allowing current to flow to your load. Now, in this particular isolator, you see I've got an earth point over here on the frame of this isolator switch. Now, all I need to do is connect both the incoming earth, the earth from the DB board, to the earth from the load. Right, so everything is wired up. Now, because we've been fiddling with this, it's always good to go and retighten all the terminals just to make sure that nothing has become loose. Right, now don't just shove this in here. You've got to put this in neatly. So what I normally do is I try and feed these wires and curl them inside there. Be very careful when the earth wires are exposed like this because as you can see, if you just shove this inside, you might find that you've cut off too much of the insulation of maybe the lava, the neutral, and the copper touches that. So it's very important to feed this in and carefully observe the wires where they seat. If you'd like to, you can put some green insulation tape around this earth wire. All you need to do is screw in your faceplate screws and then you have wired up your isolator switch.